and the high-speed rail links us from the past to the future, from the south to Fresno and north. This is truly a California project bringing us together today. In January, Governor Brown helped celebrate the groundbreaking of high-speed rail at the site of the future station in downtown Fresno. It's about men and women in hard hats actually making stuff, but you gotta put something in the ground. You gotta get these building trades, men and women, doing stuff. That's what makes America, what makes the world go around. That work starts with Construction Package 1. It begins at Avenue 17 in Madera County, traveling through Madera and Fresno County to East American Avenue in downtown Fresno. The design-build contractor, Tudor Perini Zachary Parsons, is hard at work on the 29-mile segment with the first construction currently underway at the Fresno River Viaduct in Madera. Piles are now in place. Columns are being built for the 1,600-foot-long structure. Seven small businesses, equaling 74 workers, are actively involved in the Fresno River Viaduct construction. Work here is expected to last about another 10 months. As the work in Madera progresses, several other locations have been identified where work could begin in the coming weeks and into early next year. There, there is another location at Avenue 12 that looks promising. Work there will create a grade separation between the tracks and the busy roadway, which will increase safety for both vehicles and pedestrians. Other projects include... In Fresno, downtown area, there is the Tuolumne Bridge demolition. That is uh, also a possibility. There is uh, State Route 180 that uh, we will build a uh, tunnel that goes under State Route 180. Overall, we've identified seven, seven locations, including Fresno River Viaduct. All that work is being done using Tier 4 machines, the greenest construction equipment available. And you don't have to look hard to see it. This is our equipment yard right off Highway 99. Highway 99 is where Caltrans expects to begin work in December on another high-speed rail-related project. Over the next two years, Caltrans will move a two-mile section of Highway 99 100 feet to the west. It uh, reconstructs three bridges that are existing now, two over the Union Pacific Railroad and one over 99. And all three of those bridges get reconstructed about six feet higher than the current bridges and slightly realigned to accommodate the high-speed rail corridor. And throughout Fresno, high-speed rail has been busy with the demolition of several vacant buildings, including the Del Monte plant, the Kerr Rug building, and the Del Mar Motel. Other crews have also been busy with utility relocation throughout the Fresno area. And while work continues on construction package one, design-build contractor Dragato's Flatiron is focused on construction package 2-3. That's the 65-mile stretch traveling from South Fresno through Fresno, Kings, and Tulare counties. It ends one mile north of the Kern-Tulare County line. Right now, the contractor is finishing designs, busy acquiring property, doing utility and demolition work, and is preparing to begin road work improvement in the next few weeks. We're, we're actually hoping that we can get into major construction uh, by, um, by uh, spring of, uh, of, uh, of next year. So we're, I think we're going to make it. And finally, construction package four. It extends 22 miles to Poplar Avenue, north of the city of Bakersfield. The design-build contract is expected to be awarded and executed in early 2016. It's the same thing in Fresno. Uh, Mayor Ashley Swearingen, huge proponent of the program, um, never wavered in spite of a lot of pressure to do so. Um, and a big part is, again, she's seen what's happened in Fresno and what's ahead for Fresno. Fresno's got 500,000 people, um, a lot bigger than most people realize, a million people in the county. Over the last few decades, Fresno has consumed 50,000 acres of farmland by growing out as it's grown. What she wants to do is refocus that growth more inward and upward, more sustainable, more compact development. 
And we are going to help do that by creating an economic activity center with our station. Because that's what stations will be. They're not just a turnstile. It's not just a way of getting on a train. They'll become focal points of what happens in cities. And we really want to make sure that happens. And that's what happens around the world, and even elsewhere in the country where you see major rail, inner city and high-speed rail systems developed. Stations become economic activity centers, destinations by themselves. In many of the big stations around the world, half of the people going into them never actually get on a train. They go to restaurants, they go to shops, they meet other people there. Um, they're centers of activity and they become the focal point for growth. We're seeing an amazing thing happen in San Francisco where the Transbay Transit Center is being built. That's the station that will be our northern terminus for phase one. As that station is being built, there are 18 new buildings going up immediately around that station. It's the biggest boom in construction in San Francisco, which has seen a lot of booms um, in a very long time. But it's all tied to the promise of what that station is going to mean to San Francisco and bringing people into the city. You know, another key element of high-speed rail, distinguished from, from uh, airports, is they're in the downtowns. And so it ties right into the local economies, gets people right into business, right into hotels, right into restaurants, into to being a part of the city as opposed to being outside of the city. And we'll talk a little about, whoops, sorry. Something's supposed to show here. Here we go. I think there was supposed to be music or something with that, so sorry about that. But what that was showing was basically how these stations, again, the idea that the, it's not just about building a station. It's not just about getting people on the train, off the train, but creating economic activity around them, putting in office space, retail space, hotels, um, other development around that's going to have huge economic benefits for cities. You know, here in Los Angeles, Union Station has several million square feet of uh, development rights attached to it that have never really taken off as we work more with Metro to develop not just high-speed rail and bring it here but develop the local transit we're gonna see that potential realized we're gonna see that in cities like Palmdale and Bakersfield Fresno Gilroy um, cities all over the state who are gonna see the benefit now of what it means to be tied together to other communities in a way that they never have been before um, you know, the governor talked about the challenges of big projects, and, and that is one of the absolute truisms, certainly regarding our program. And we, we talk about that a lot, you know, comparing the challenges that we go through in developing a program like this um, with previous other big investments. The fact that the Golden Gate Bridge, when it was built, was incredibly controversial. Over 2,000 lawsuits were filed against it. Um, Ansel Adams opposed the Golden Gate Bridge because he thought it would be a desecration of the bay. You know, the water, state water project passed by a single vote. That's what these projects are about. They're controversial. And it's easy for people to take pot shots. There are always going to be a hundred different reasons why we shouldn't do it, why it's hard, why it's inconvenient, everything else. 
And the fact is we have to persevere and get it done. That's what people did before us and generations before us, that's what we have to do. But we get hit with a lot of stuff and I just wanna take a few moments and talk about a few of the things we deal with, some of the, some of the myths and some of the reality. And you know, we, we hear that there's, there's no money, there will never be money, we can't ever build anything. Well, that's not right. And you could say the same thing about any big investment before. You know, the, the interstate highway system wasn't built until we created a gas tax. And even then it required other support. You know, any big transit system, you have to go through and create funding sources. The fact is we now have a solid base with which we're beginning the construction of the program and a solid base because of cap and trade funding now, which the governor proposed and the legislature adopted a continuous revenue stream, 25% of the total cap and trade proceeds. And what that translates into is at least $500 million a year that we can now use to finance the development of this system. And that's the way we're moving forward. And we're gonna develop it now as a system. So yes, is funding hard? Does it cost a lot? Of course, but we can tackle it. Um, anybody who's read the LA Times lately has probably seen that Apparently, we are incapable of building tunnels here in this country, um, which is interesting because we've got all sorts of tunnels. We've got all sorts of tunnels uh, running through over um, fault lines in the state. The BART system runs through fault lines here in, in the metro system. We've got all sorts of lines running through and around faults. Um, Back in 1873, the Southern Pacific somehow figured out how to get through the Tehachapis with pickaxes and dynamite. And I have an odd feeling we'll be able to tap into modern expertise to, to get that done here. So tunneling, again, of course it's a challenge. You have to take all these things into effect, but it can be done and it will be done. And similarly, just the engineering aspects. Engineers can do anything. Right? I mean, it's how much you want to pay for it and how to do it most effectively. Um, I, Japan, you know, which is a model, obviously was the first uh, country to have high-speed rail, has just celebrated 50 years of service without a fatality you know, on the system. Amazing to think about. One of their next extensions is going to connect islands and is going to have about 65 miles of tunnels under the ocean to connect islands. They just do it, you know, that's, we can do this stuff. And then lastly, and it just plays into this audience, um, you know, we also hear, and people love to decry, you know, anytime anybody suggests that they have a question or a concern and it's pointed to as waning support for the program. Well, keep in mind, again, like every other big investment that's been made, the margin of support was small to begin with because these things are controversial. And it's actually never really budged very much since 2008 when Prop 1A was passed. But we have tremendous support for this program from people who really drive the decisions. From local elected officials like Mayor Ledford, like Ashley Swearingen, Ed Lee in San Francisco, <laughs> because they see what this will mean to their cities, to their future. Um, Every major regional chamber of commerce in the state of California is on record supporting high-speed rail, which is a pretty amazing thing um, that the, the business community is behind for the same reasons. They see the value of being tied together. You know, Silicon Valley, uh, the, the Bay Area Council, which is the, the coalition of businesses in the Bay Area, many of them being the Silicon Valley companies, absolutely see the benefit of being connected with the population and the resources of the Central Valley, being able to, to, to expand their workforce, have people find more affordable housing, and just grow their, their businesses. The LA Chamber similarly, the Anaheim Chamber, all of them support the system. And I know we have at least one student here. I don't know if, do we have our LA Rail folks here? Um, but I, you know, we, we've got tremendous support among the people who are going to be the ones riding this system, the people for whom we're building this, because that's an important thing to think about when you talk about any investment like this. We're not doing it for today. We're building for the future. And California is going to look a lot different in 20 years in terms of transportation, in terms of environment, in terms of technologies than it does today. 
and high-speed rail is going to be an important part of that. So with that, I thank you for your support and your interest, and would be happy to take any questions. that first usable segment finished, which I guess is going to be from above Fresno down to Bakersfield? Is that going to be done by 2017? And if not, when will it be done and does it comply with the ARA funds? Sure. The, when we receive the federal funds through the Stimulus Act, through the ARA, um, all funds in that act had an expiration date of September 30th, 2017, not just the high-speed rail money. Um, so we have to expend all of the RF funds we, we received, which was about $2.2 .2 billion dollars um, by 2017, and we're on track to do that. Um, the project, that's separate from the project schedule. Um, that ties specifically to the use of those dollars. We're under construction, as I noted now. Uh, we're moving well along. Uh, we expect to have that done. Um, and depending on some decisions we'll be making over the next year in terms of how we move forward with electrification and putting signaling and, and how we build out to an operating system uh, between 2018 and 2020 is when we would have the, the full-blown system up and running um, in the Central Valley. That will be our test track uh, where we'll be testing and certifying the new trains um, before we get into full revenue service. Jeff, thanks for coming. I have a quick question. Uh, on CP4, how many of those five firms actually turned in and when will you be making an announcement who the apparent uh, uh, firm will be for CP4? I know you said you'll be uh, making the award after the first year, but is there any indication when we might know how many people responded and, and when will it actually be announced? Sure. So just to back up a little bit, we've in the Central Valley, we've been proceeding with design-build contracts, um, and that was tied to the way our funding came and, and our ability to move forward. We've awarded two to date, um, again, a total value of about two, uh, um, two and a half billion dollars. Um, CP4, which carries us down, will have about 120 miles under contract with that. Uh, we just received the bids on those last week. We've received five bids on that, which is greatly encouraging. We're benefiting tremendously by having good, strong competition in the industry. Uh, we're seeing competition from the leading players in the world to deliver this program, and, and then we're really gratified by that and encouraged by it. Um, our, we're in the process of reviewing that and uh, expect to award that contract, get approval to award that contract uh, early uh, next year, January or February of next year. So we'll have Again, 120 miles roughly under contract and underway um, by the beginning of next year, which is only a few weeks away. Okay. Well, I think we're going to hear about trains next uh, from uh, Siemens and others. But again, I thank you for your interest, your support, and uh, enjoy the conference. <laughs>